Hey everybody, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Denise Thomas and I am here with Diversity and Equity for Education and also I'm being hosted by Teaching for the Culture. So today we're gonna do a quick overview of laptop and desktop usage and why, why students need to know this. And people are asking questions like, well, why do you think, you know, why would you do that? Kids know how to use a laptop. I can guarantee you <laughs> they are having some issues with it based on the fact that I have been going through trainings right now and I've been teaching and I've been looking at what needs to be done and it's gonna be some crucial things that kids need to know regarding the laptop. So let's just spend a few minutes going through that right now, okay? All right, so the first thing we need to understand about school is the essentials. You know, back in the day when you went to school, usually you, you had a back, backpack, some pens and pencils, you had some paper, Maybe and if you're old school like me, we had a trapper keeper. <laughs> but uh, now, one of the things when you think about school, so the first question I have is, you know, when you're thinking about items for school, do you include technology? And if so, are these the type of technology that come to mind? So you're thinking about maybe a cell phone. Your child need a couple pair the uh, earbuds or ear pods. And also, um, perhaps you know, a lot of times for us in middle school, we see the Nintendo Switch, we see the games, we see things like that. But those would not be considered essential for school. Those are fun to have, but they are not essential for school. We're going to look at what's considered essential right now. So what's essential for right now is a laptop, Chromebook, tablet. Now, if your school is not providing them or your school has limited access for your children to have them, they're relatively inexpensive, depending on what you what you what um where you're going to go to get them from. It would be best, like I said, being that we go forward in the future, you need to understand that this is a, an invaluable tool, along with everything else that you need to buy for your child for school, like, you know, jackets and clothes and things like that. And right now, they're going to be home. But you got to start saying in your mind going forward as technology moves forward, a, a laptop is one of the tools that's going to end up being essential. That's the one, just a thing that you're going to have to decide in your mind. I have to include this in my budget because this is what we're going to need to do. So let's talk about right now, we're going to look at the, the just the keyboard itself and understand why it's very important for kids to look at a keyboard. So you, you may have been familiar with this thing called QWERTY. Now, going back to the original manual typewriters, QWERTY was the first line going across the top of a, a manual typewriter. So that's the Q to W, the E to R, the T and the Y. And it's it's a it's basically what is the, what's across that top row. Now, when you're looking at a, a laptop, it is the third line down because the first two will be your function keys, and then you'd also have your number keys, depending on, depending on how your laptop is set up. But it definitely comes, that's where, that's where the QWERTY is. Once the kids are familiar with those keys, they can start to manipulate around, because I'm looking at the laptop right now, and I'm beginning to look around at the other essential letters. They should know where the vowels are, the A, the I, the E, the O, the U. They need to look at what those letters are. They need to know where the Y is. It's essential for them to know where, the, where things like the period is, where is the uh, comma, Where's the space bar? That's essential. And if, if they understand where that is, they won't be hunting and looking around. So this is going to lead us to why they need to be very, very familiar with these particular keys. So for example, um, let's, let's talk about why it's important to learn keyboarding. So first of all, have you ever seen adults hunt and pick? You know what hunt and pick is. They, they, they look and they look and they look and they look. But what does that do? The hunt and peck technique, it actually interferes with the natural flow of our thoughts. So just to, just to summarize that real quick, if, if a child is writing and they, they have the idea for in their head and it's processed and they're ready to go, by the time they try to bang out those first two words and they hit the space bar, they've completely forgotten what they have to do. So they're struggling right now because, hey, I had an idea. Now I've totally forgot. OK, where's the period? Oh, wait, I got to hit the shift key and then I got to make a capital, capital word. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to take the cap lock off. All of that will draw away their focus from what they need to do. So if you're if you have them be familiar, if you have them do things like writing in journals or you have them doing diary entries or just have them doing poetry, anything that they want to do, have them do a, if they like rap music, have them do a rap song, but type it into the laptop or into their computer so that they can practice where these keys are. Because if they're if they're not practicing now, it's going to hinder them later on. So next thing I want to really look at is why it's so important that they they need to learn it. Let's, let's figure out what what. How useful is it? So let's figure this out. Right now, we're not in school here in Hillsborough County. We are not in school uh, until the 24th of this month. But why is it essential to practice? It should be practicing all summer, but we get it. But why do we need to practice right now? Okay, so let's look at the, the big things. 
first of all, most of our classes right now are going to be online. We, without even arguing about it, just accept it as a fact that pretty much everything we're going to have to do is online just because of safety reasons and things like that. Um, the submissions that are going to be turned into teachers will have to be online. Most teachers are not going to want to take paper due to, for safety reasons again. So they're going to have to submit a lot of their work online. That means that work has to be legible. It has to be clear enough that teachers can understand. Understand also that our formative assessments are going to be online. Things that we were not, as a teacher personally, I wouldn't really think that they were going to do, but we have the FSA coming up. We're going to have our baseline assessments that are coming up. We're going to have things that, you know, that are actual writing tests online. So you have to understand if they, the, the more they're familiar with the keyboarding experience, the better it's going to be for those tests. And remember also a lot of those tests are timed. So that's another thing to think about either 60 or 90 minutes. Finally, if students get a feel of the keyboard, it's going to force them to be to write in coherent sentences. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, have you ever read a block of text? Like one, one thing that turns off kids, I'm a reading teacher, so one thing that turns kids off is when they see a block, a whole block of, of text, nothing but black and white on the page. There's no separation. There's no indentation. Um, you can't tell where the sentence begins and the, and the sentence ends. You, you just see a bunch of just free-flowing sentences just uh, and sentence fragments. For them, the more that they practice, the more they're going to start to realize, oh, I've got to put my thoughts in order. I've got to make my thoughts clearer. I've got to be able to separate this thought from this thought. So that practice, as they say, the old adage, practice makes perfect. Okay, let's go on. Where... Where we have, where we're looking at now, the very last thing in conclusion is that what can typing essentially do? What can it do in the end? So here's, here's the key things about typing. Typing is definitely going to hone your writing skills because the more they write, the clearer their, their thought process is going to be. Okay. Then it's going to make editing so much easier. Why? Because they no longer have to sit there and get a piece of paper, write out their whole story, write their whole essay out, whatever it is that they have to write, and then turn around and type it. If they're typing it the first time, you can edit it quickly. So that's that's also a key. And then along with editing as well, one thing that it does, it, it allows kids to see right away if they're spelling errors. Usually in Microsoft Word, underneath words that are spelled incorrectly or sometimes names, it, it, the lines will show up red. Sometimes if there's a grammatical error, you'll see a blue double blue um, double lines there. But it shows them right away, oh, wait a minute, something is wrong. So it helps them to say, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and fix that. And then finally, there are three, I call them the three Ds, is what I call them. Kids who are struggling with things like dyslexia. What dyslexia is, I'm gonna make sure I give you the dictionary definition. <laughs> dyslexia is difficulty in reading and learning to read or interpret words, letters, and symbols. Kids with dyslexia, which I have a touch of dyslexia, so I know, is it, you see things a little bit differently, but the more you practice, the better it's going to be for you. And you're able to then say, oh, okay, that's where the key is. If you know you have to write a D, but it looks like a B to you, once you're familiar with that, where that letter D is, you, you can constantly go back to it and you know it'll help you with that. Then there's something called dysgraphia. It's the, it's the inability to write coherently. So, of course, if you're having problems, like really bad handwriting, um, typing is going to be your lifesaver because... People won't have to struggle, as my father would call it, with your chicken scratch, <laughs> okay? And then finally, you have something called dyspraxia, which is an inability to carry out, you know, um, specific movements or gestures. And the more you practice, it's sort of like having a um, carpal tunnel, and you just really can't can't do what you need to do. But if the more you practice like that, it'll help you to stay on track. All right, guys, so that's pretty much all I really have in terms of why it's important for kids to get to get on their laptop and practice keyboarding skills. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys probably in another two weeks with another set of tips for you. Until then, goodbye.